the fantasy ad with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville, Fantasy Six Pack.net. Joining me shortly is Kevin Ho, also a Fantasy Six Pack.net. Uh, Jonathan Chan is off tonight. Uh, he's uh, he's got some. Uh, he's probably got a, stayed a little bit over time at uh, at school. He's doing a lot of uh, he's doing a lot of broadcasting and stuff these days. So, uh, but we're uh, monitoring the. Uh, Pittsburgh and Cincinnati game. Currently, Pittsburgh leads 24 to 3. Um, their defense is just dominating the uh, Bengals front line. Uh, um, there's just no time whatsoever for uh, Andy Dalton to get a pass, to get any kind of passing game going. And uh, Joe Mixon, uh, the, well, they've had to give up on the run, but of course the Steelers know that. And so they're just blitzing every single play. Kev, how are you doing, my man? Uh, you missed out last week. Uh, nice to have you back. Yeah, good to be back. Sorry I missed last week. Had some school stuff to take care of, but uh, glad to be back. Now, uh, in our league, uh, you made a trade. You traded. Uh, you traded away James Conner and uh, Chris, uh, Christian Kirk for Nick Chubb and Cole Beasley. Am I right? Yep, Nick Chubb, Cole Beasley. All right. Um, somebody somebody put a poll up, and I think that was uh, Keith uh, put a poll up of who won. I don't know how that. Uh, I don't know how that poll turned out. He put a poll who who won the trade. Uh, how do you feel about it? Do you feel you won or feel you lost? So, feel it's even? Okay. What's funny is before the game started yesterday, uh, hmm. the poll was probably about 35-65 on the Connor side. So yeah. Connor was up. And now after Chubb exploded, uh, the final result is 55-45 on the Chubb side. So um, good job, Twitter. Way to be, you know... Uh, Way to, way to just factor in recency bias. Um, that, that's that's always how it is, though, isn't it? Yeah. But, I mean, I wonder after his performance, people's opinions would change because Connor's having another good game, too. But, yeah, I mean, I thought it was a good trade for me. Um, I like my wide receiver depth a lot. I've got Julio Lockett, um, McLaurin, and then Golden Tate coming back from suspension. So um, I didn't really mind giving up Kirk, and I thought the upgrade from uh, – I thought the upgrade from, what you call it, from Connor to Chubb was pretty clear. So that was a move I was willing to make. And I think, I mean, obviously it worked out this week with Chubb going nuts. Um, but down the line, I think it'll work out too. I just rather have myself tethered to that Browns offense than that Steelers one. I don't really believe in it yet. No, uh, Mason Rudolph looks like he's a work in progress tonight. I mean, he's playing all right. He's game managing, uh, really. Um, he's going... He's taking the check down. He's taking the safe moves. Uh, he's, he's only made one like big pass downfield and that was to Deontay Johnson for the touchdown. Um, he's looking good. Uh, he's not a, he's not a quarterback. You're, you're streaming yet. Um, Andy Dalton, I think, he, well, he looks better than Andy Dalton. <laughs> Andy Dalton can't get anything going. And, uh, well, I guess when you're flat on your back, uh, most of the time you can't really pass downfield anyway. Something that, uh, we're going to be talking about in respects to, uh, Deshaun Watson, I'm sure, as the, uh, podcast goes on but let's get on to the news uh melvin gordon is back and I, you're just the person to talk about this because we of course melvin gordon holding out for all this time but um while he was holding out austin eckler emerged as as a top 10 quarter uh, running back uh, to own in fantasy i mean even i would even go as far to say that he's he's uh knocking on the door of top five so what do you do? What do you do with the? What do you do with this backfield now, Kev? Um, I think the coach came out and said that Melvin Gordon will be the starter. Um, but I mean, because he's, I, I don't know. I think he literally said like, "Oh, because he's Melvin Gordon," which is pretty crazy to me, given how productive Eckler's been. But um, whatever he says goes, I guess. So you can only go based off that. Um, personally, I think uh, Melvin Gordon is probably going to need some time to get eased back into things. So I think Eckler is going to be usable. I mean, I think they're probably going to split something like 50-50 for a while, and then maybe we'll go back to Eckler 30, Gordon 70 in a few weeks or so. So for the next couple of weeks, you're still going to get to use Eckler as, I would say, like an RB2 at worst. Um, we swore, you know, until we see Melvin Gordon at least. Um, so like next week, I'll play I'll play Eckler. I'm not too worried about it. Um, like you said, he's a, he's, a, he's a top five running back for now. I read a stat that in these four weeks, Eckler 
has uh, 490 yards, six touchdowns, and um, during no no four week period in Melvin Gordon's career has he ever topped those numbers. So it, it's not just that like Gordon's going to come in and just be amazing. I think Eckler has clearly proven himself to be pretty talented, so I think he's going to remain useful in that offense. Yeah, and I uh, you got to think about the uh, the passing game. I think Melvin Gordon was always tended to be more the ground attack. In, in a sense, an upgrade on Justin Jackson, if you will. Yeah, um, Justin Jackson is, is out. He's in a walking boot. I don't know how long he's out for, but yeah, you can essentially see it as J- Justin Jackson going to get downgraded a bunch, and Eckler should be, you know, still retain the third down passing work. Melvin Gordon can catch a little bit, but Eckler's caught 24-25 balls this year, so I think he's clearly proven himself to be superior there. So did you say 70-30 or 60-40? Um, I think 70-40 is what it was at last year, uh, but I could see something close to 40. It wouldn't surprise me. Eckler's really good. You know what? I think it might even be tighter than that. Could be even like, you know, if you want to split hairs, 55-45. I even think there are going to be weeks where Eckler out-touches Gordon, perhaps. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think um, I I think if I'm an Eckler owner, I don't think you're gonna. No one's really gonna value him too much if you if you want to trade him, and you probably didn't spend that much draft capital on anyway. So I think you might as well hold on to Eckler if you own him. And if you're a Gordon owner, uh, that's probably the only place where I would probably trade for Eckler. Um, or if you're an Eckler owner, maybe try to flip him to the Gordon owner. But I don't think you're really gonna get good value for Eckler no matter how you look at it. So I think better just to hold on to him and see what you can see what happens. What do you think about moving on from Gordon on that side of it? Yeah, if I was um, if I was able to convince someone in my league that Gordon is like the RB one and oh, you see what Eckler is doing, Gordon's gonna do that when he gets there, and I could get really good like low end RB one, high end RB two value for him, I'd move because I think uh, like we both just kind of said, I think there's a, a world where Gordon is is not the fantasy stud that we're we're all assuming he's going to be. Okay, well, we'll see how that all works out. So moving on to uh, Trubisky. Was, uh, he's going to make the trip to London, but he's not going to play apparently till uh, week seven. I guess he's just going to um, soak in a bit of London nightlife for for a while and take it easy. Um, uh, separated his shoulder, uh, amongst other things. I think there was some other complications, but apparently it's not too serious. Doesn't need surgery. No tear. Uh, the MRI came back negative. Uh, not doing very well. In fact, uh, I noted in my weekend preview that he and Cousins came into the the game on Sunday as the two quarterbacks with the lowest yardage in the league. So not very good for uh, Trubisky, uh, whether he's in or not. Um, I don't think anybody's going to rush out to stream uh, Chase Daniels anytime soon. I think there's better options out there. But uh, thoughts on Trubisky and his season to date and Cousins, for that matter, in the Bears game? Um, Trubisky, yeah, I mean, he's kind of holding the Bears ba- offense back a little bit. I think a, a, a pretty reasonable way to put it is that um, Trubisky has a higher ceiling for the Bears, but Chase Daniel has a higher floor. So um, a lot of the easier stuff, you're, you're going to see those, the woes wide receivers really get involved on the easier stuff for the Bears. Um, he, you know, Daniels can make the simple throws, whereas Trubisky is 50-50 to even just throw a four yard out or whatever. Um, but ultimately, yeah, I'm not really too much how I feel about the Bears offense. I don't think Chase Daniel is a significant upgrade. Um, so if he's going to miss some games, it is what it is. I don't really think I care too much. No. Uh, the effect on, of course, the pass catchers is is uh, is what is clear there. But uh, Cousins did throw a little bit more, I think, out of desperation because the Bears defense. Uh, I think the Bears defense has proven that they can stop the run. Same with the Eagles, too. I think the Eagles are a good run defense. So, I mean, the Bears, it's, you know, we talk about players being matchup proof. And Dalvin Cook, um, he wasn't matchup proof against the Bears. Yeah, I mean, that's fair to say. I mean, I think when the offense struggles, I mean, we all heard of what Adam Thielen said, right? They said the Vikings would be able to pass the ball. Otherwise, they're just going to load up, which is true. I mean, as good as Dalvin Cook is, if uh, opposing defenses, especially defenses, as good as the Bears are, if they don't respect the run, if they don't respect the pass game, they're just going to put eight in the box, and, and there's not much you can ask your running back to do there. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the Bears running backs, uh, they're another story. They 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 they, they 
they got stuck in the mud uh, against uh, Minnesota. So, anyways, uh, I want to talk a little bit. Now, this is not really fantasy related, but I kind of want to talk about it anyway. And it's about Vontez Perfect, and uh, there's been a lot of discussion about Vontez Perfect uh, being suspended for the season. I think a lot of people, I think, should be an indefinite suspension. Um, it was on the ESPN show with Stephen A. and uh, and it was suggested by one of the panelists. Uh, who's the guy? The other guy that sits across from him. Uh, not Will Kane, is it? I think so. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so he suggested that uh, Perfect should be um, suspended indefinitely. I went on YouTube and I wanted to see like all the dirty hits. And boy, <laughs> he's got he's got a greatest dirty hits album out there, man. You should see some of them. Because I forgot about some of these bad hits that he's done. Um, I mean, I I don't know what it is. I mean, he's been fined how many times now, and suspended how many times now, and but he just keeps on doing it. What is wrong with Vronte's perfect, Kev? Um, he's just a dirty player, I guess. I mean, it's some it's, some people are just like that. That's how they play them. I read somewhere that he's been uh, fined about five million dollars worth of salary and you know penalties throughout his career. So. Um, usually money is enough for people to care about that kind of stuff, but I guess not for him. And, you know, if he, that's just how he is, that's just how he is. I, I agree that he shouldn't be allowed to play in the league until he's, I don't know. I don't even know how he can like prove that he's not a psychopath. Like, I think he just shouldn't be allowed to play in the league. I think that's almost fair. He just loses himself and, and, and he forgets himself. And, uh, the, I think when sometimes some players, they get on the field and they, uh, there, it's like a change of personality. Anyway, um, so I've got the, I've got last week's game on here, but, uh, but, uh, we talked a little bit about the Bengals and Steelers already and, uh, their problems. Um, yeah, I, we did talk about, uh, Jalen Samuels and, uh, and he's coming into the offense and I don't know. I think there's, they ran a lot of Wildcat today. I think they're going to be experimenting with that in the weeks to come. So just until, uh, Mason Rudolph uh, acclimates to uh, the passing game a little more. So we'll see how that turns out. <clears throat> uh, so that's our uh, headlines. Let's, let's take a look at the top performers of Sunday. Some really strange names up here, Kev. Uh, uh, who sticks out for you this week in our Sunday top performers? Yeah, it, w- it was a strange week. Um, a lot of weird... I mean, on top of the people who finished in the top 10, it was a lot of weird who just popped up as far as, you know, scoring touchdowns. Uh, Tremaine Pope scored a touchdown. Ricky Seals-Jones scored a touchdown. Just random people left in foot. Um, if I could start... Let's start with uh, a quarterback that I really like. Um, I think... Now, I, I could could be like I could be wrong. I take this back. It ends up you know not working out. But I think Jameis might be t- turning corner. Um, over his last two games, I think he has. I know for sure he has seven touchdowns. Um, I think he has almost 750 combined passing yards. Uh, granted, it's against the Giants and a just a pitiful uh, Rams effort. But um, I think he's getting it together. Uh, Mike Evans kind of was banged up going into the season, so maybe that's an excuse. But I think this is the Jameis that a lot of fantasy experts were kind of thinking we would see under Arians, and um, I don't know. I'm here for it. Uh, you know something, and I even noticed that in the Giants game, even though it was a losing effort, uh, I could tell that hmm, the uh, Buccaneers look uh, like a very difficult football team to beat, and, uh, and they are. And uh, I mean, you don't go into, you don't, it's pretty hard. Okay, granted, the Rams, uh, I got to give the Rams credit. They came all the way back and made a football game out of it. That was quite amazing, actually, how uh, how they managed to turn it around. And with, you know, there was actually lots of time left in the fourth quarter and they, you know, 18 points down and they managed to uh, rally back. And they, they could have, they had a good chance in that game to, uh, to beat them. But the uh, Buccaneers offense and Jameis Winston, uh, he's up for it. Now, I want to just talk about Ronald Jones for a second. He, I saw Ronald Jones make some cuts that I never thought he was capable of in uh, in that game. Uh, Ronald Jones is starting to look very good. I think he's pulling away from uh, Peyton Barber for sure. Yeah, Jones is someone else that I eventually wanted to touch on. But, yeah, he looked good. I, mean, I think he's been mm. looking pretty good throughout the season. Um, just um, He had a couple big plays held uh, called back for holding, but his snap share has gone steadily up this week was the first week that he led the backfield in touches uh with 36 to Payne Barber's 19 
Uh, Ogumawali played 21, so that's obviously a great sign. And he's just ultimately more talented, these guys. Um, if he can make plays, uh, if he can, you know, if he can know the offense and see the holes where he see him, he's, he adds another dimension to his offense that, I, you know, with it's a good compliment to James, James uh, with his downfield passing. Yeah, and I just want to point out uh, James's uh, James's numbers. I'll just I'll just get them up here for in a second here. But uh, I'm sorry I stole your thunder about uh, you were going to talk about uh, Ronald Jones. Pick you'll have to pick another now because yeah. I, I didn't see that down there that you'd uh, chosen uh, uh, oh, yeah. Ronald Jones as your uh, moving on up guy because he certainly is. Um, yes, uh, where have we got him here? Uh, da, da, da. Can you find him? There he is, Jameis Winston. Yeah, uh, 380 and 385 uh, yards in the last two games. Uh, started off the season like. 10 and 13 fantasy points. That was 27 fantasy points and 30 fantasy points uh, in in his last two games. Uh, still pocket passer. You know one thing? I'd like to see Jameis run a little bit. I think he's probably got wheels if he has to, but eh. but anyway. I think it's one thing I, I like about quarterbacks like Russell Wilson or, or uh, Cam Newton or Lamar Jackson is that they got wheels, and that can get you a lot of fantasy points. But passing quarterbacks like Jameis Winston, uh, they're just fine uh, if they're – if they're doing it. And uh, so that's pretty good totals for him. Uh, the guy I'm going to start off with. Now, I want to make an apology to uh, <laughs> Leonard Fournette. Uh, I've been kind of mean to him I because he wears number 27. I've been sort of comparing him to Eddie Lacy lately, and uh, which is, I think is a little unfair. But maybe, you know, maybe it got him going this week. Because up until that point, he had 66 rushing yards, um, 47 rushing yards, 66. Now, granted, the game against Houston, he went over 100 total scrimmage yards. But he didn't, but he hasn't scored a touchdown yet. Well, I guess those, those will come, but, but, but that's the kind of thing you need from a, from a running back is, uh, is those, uh, just to save your day, get a touchdown at least. And, uh, but you haven't seen that from Fournette until yesterday where he rushed this 225 yards and 20 receiving yards. So he, 20, 245 yards from scrimmage for a total of 26 uh, half PPR fantasy points compared with uh, a total of just 32 for the last three games if you add them all up. So um, Leonard Fournette, Kev, um, uh, I guess we're not giving up on him now. I was about to. No, I think uh, Fournette is really, I mean, he finally had, I think this was the first time since 2017 that he rushed for over 100 yards, which is mind-blowing. You figure that with as much volume he gets, he probably would top 100 at some point. But he finally looked like, you know, the running back that we all thought he was. Um, against a pretty reasonably good defense as well. So, I don't know. I like Burnett. Uh, I just like him a lot because of his volume, and it looks like they're using him a lot in the passing game, and Minchu does like to dump it off a little bit because he, he does kind of make the high percentage play. So, I do really like Burnett a lot going forward, especially if he's going to catch three to four balls a week. Yeah, and, uh, well, he's he's getting good targets, although he was, well, it was his lowest targeted uh, game of the season. Up until that point, he was uh, averaging about seven targets a game, and he just got, uh, pardon me, yeah, seven targets a game, and he only got three targets, but of course he didn't need it because he carried the ball a mind-blowing 29 times, which uh, he produced. I want to also mention that game against Tennessee. Uh, there was just that one run that sort of saved him because I think he was negative yardage into that point. He was really looking like a real plotter uh, in the Tennessee game, but uh, Tennessee's starting to look a little better. I think Mariota's looking a little bit better. We can talk about that a little bit later, but yeah, Fournette, uh, Fournette's my guy. My apologies to Fournette for comparing him to Eddie Lacy, but eh, I have to say, Leonard, you weren't looking that good up until uh, this past Sunday. So, who you got, Kev? Uh, yeah, so running back, uh, obviously, got to talk about Nick Chubb. Um, Chubb. 80, yeah, on top of it, 88, a touchdown. He's just, uh, it's weird. They do use Hilliard a little more than I, I would hope that they do. But, I mean, you can't really complain. He had 20 carries, 168 yards, topped off by that 88 yard touchdown. Um, added another two touchdowns on top of that. And he's, you know, he's being used in the passing game as well. Uh, caught three or four targets, and you know he's caught fourteen of nineteen targets on this. And so Chubb is is you know officially an RB one. Um, his usage rate through the roof. That offense is only going to get better as um, Kitchens gets more and more familiar, or you know they get him out of there. Whatever one happens, um, ultimately I think it'll be good for him. Um, yeah, he's a beast, and I think uh, he's a he's probably a top 
five running back going forward. Yeah, 20 rushes, 165 yards, uh, four targets, three receptions, 18 yards. Of course, those, of course, the money, uh, is three touchdowns and that, that fantastic long one where he just broke it. And, uh, you always like to see that. And that's what Fournette was doing. Fournette was breaking them. And, uh, you love to see, you love to see your fantasy guy, uh, just breaking the clear, don't you? It's such a good feeling when you're watching the game and your fantasy guy just breaks out, breaks through the, and goes for the long touchdown, the running backs. Uh, nothing like it. Nothing like it. Right. It's like drugs. Huh? Except he was playing against my team. That one hurt, but it is what it is. Yeah, it, it, he, oh, that's right. Yeah, it was against the Ravens. Uh, yeah, Lamar, another, another, uh, he didn't make, uh, yeah, it looks like Lamar didn't make the top 10 again. That's two weeks in a row. Lamar's kind of missed the top 10 after oh, no, such he good definitely did. <laughs> Lamar was not super impressive, but he had 66 yards on the ground. He, he's in the top 10. I'm a, not, yeah. not according to the happy PR list. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> he made he's, third. He's going to be he, there. He made third. Pardon me. I'm thinking of the other week. So the rushing yards flow in every, um, you know, and the offense, he's going to get two touchdowns somehow, and the rushing yards flow in. <laughs> yeah, no, I beg your pardon. Uh, my, my mistake, I was, I'm still living in week three, but uh, even week three, he did pretty good. He got 21 fantasy points. He's still doing it. Uh, yeah, 66, 66 rushing yards, three touchdowns. Moving right along, my, uh, my next guy of note, uh, I'm going to go over to the tight ends here. Um, it seems to me that... Uh, since uh, David Nyoko has gone out, the guy to have, the guy you want, is actually Ricky Seals-Jones. Only got three targets, but he caught them all for 82 yards and scored a touchdown. 14 fantasy points. And, uh, okay, so the guy to get is not Demetrius Harris. Drop him. Go after Ricky Seals-Jones. Uh, don't think it'd be any better than a tight end two, uh, as it stands, Kev. Not with yeah, three I mean, targets. I mean, if, if you pick up Lucas Seals Jones, I'm not expecting a top ten from him every week. Um, I don't expel, expect Odell to disappear every week. So, um, but I mean, as weak as the tight end position is, you can you can probably use him as a streamer in a good matchup. Yeah. Who you got? Uh, tight end I, I've got this week is Will Disley. Um, Disley's an interesting guy. I mean, on top of the fact that he's dominated a really soft matchup this week in pretty much in, let's see, we're not going to count the game where he played like eight snaps and then broke his leg. So uh, in seven career games out of those seven in five of them, he's got touchdown. He's had at least five targets in each of those in each of those uh, games. Um, his last three games, he went five for five for 50 yards, two touchdowns, six to seven for 62 and a touchdown, seven of eight for 50 seven and a touchdown um he's i think he's for real i think he's going to be um a usable tight end this season i think russell really likes having that kind of option um kind of big body in the middle of the field um yeah i think he's for real and i think that will disley going forward is going to be really really impressive yeah the targets have been very high the last two games uh new orleans seven targets and arizona eight targets and they've just grown it started off just at two against cincinnati but ever since um, it's trending in the right direction. 17, 12, and 12 fantasy points. Uh, pardon me, in, pardon me, 20, 15, and 15 and half PPR. I was reading the standard, but, uh, it's 20, 15, and 15 for Will Disley. So if you've picked him up, I'm sure he won't be available anymore. So right now, Will Disley is, uh, out distancing George Kittle. Do you think that'll? Do you think that'll change? Of course, George Kittle was on a bye this week, so he'll be back to, uh, play against Cleveland. So, no, I think I think he'll be okay. I think. Um, Who would you rather have still, right now? Oh. I, I'd rather have still. Um, I think that offense still um, a little more geared towards Kittle. Disley is is at least going to be at best the second best option, third best if you count the run game. Kittle is the number one passing uh, option in that attack, and uh, you know he's always going to be on the field for blocking purposes. So I, I like Kittle a lot. I'm sure he'll he'll get back on track starting next week. I just want to compare uh, compare Ertz Ertz. Um, He's getting the same amount of targets too, but um, of course he's not getting the touchdowns. Uh, he is uh, his last game. He got ten fantasy points. He got eight targets for sixty-five yards, which he received seven. So, um, so all those guys that are below Kelsey, you know, we're kind of looking to see. But I guess the other guy too that we're we kind of got our eyes on now is uh, Austin Hooper. We all we we kind of already knew that Austin Hooper was going to be. Um, important in the Atlanta offense, but I didn't think this important, Kev. 11 targets, 9 receptions, 130 yards, 18 total fantasy points. He didn't score a touchdown, but those are... Phew. He's the only he's the only guy in it that 
against the Titans that was doing anything. Yeah, it's a little surprising. I'm not really sure um, what's going on with the the uh, Falcons offense. They seem to struggle with the Titans, and I haven't had a chance to really go back or read analysis or anything on what happened. But the whole passing attack struggle, except for Austin Hooper, who, like you said, dominated. Um, last week, Austin Hooper was six catches, six yards, and two touchdowns as well. So um, looks like he's going to be involved in an offense. But it's surprising given that they have, you know, Julio, Ridley, Sanu, um, that he's, he's so involved. I wonder if it keeps up throughout the season. Season. But, you know, if it does, I think you can count on him as a low and tight end one anyway, just because that offense passes. Yeah, and it's it's kind of odd. I haven't seen um, <clears throat> I haven't seen Matt Ryan throw like that to a tight end since the days of Gonzalez. So and uh, so I don't know. Is he the new Gonzalez? Yeah. Is he? Yes or no on that offense? Possibly? Um, not really. I mean. Because it's hard to really. I'm not comparing them in 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 terms of their their of of their skill or their because uh, Gonzalez is obviously a, a Hall of Famer, but I'm just saying in terms of uh, tight end usage that Matt Ryan has not done with for for since the Gonzalez days. What I'm is my point. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they've had a good tight end since Gonzalez, except Hooper. So I, I guess I mean he's on the field a ton. He's pretty much a staple of their base offense. Um, they've kind of moved away from having a fourth receiver out there or having the fullback out there. So Hooper is pretty much on the field 80 plus percent of the time, which, you know, that bodes well for, for any tight end in the passing game. All right. We didn't touch in on any uh, wide receivers. You want to pick any of them before we get on to our panic buttons? Um, sure. Uh, a quick look in at Kenny Galladay, someone who uh, I didn't really believe in going into the season, but through four games, he, he's kind of proven me wrong. Um, 19 catches on 36 targets for 243 yards, four touchdowns, which is the, the big number there. Uh, really, really disappointed in a huge matchup against the Eagles last week, uh, where, you know, number ones have been flaming them all season. But other than that, he's been good all season. So um, Galladay is a guy who looks like he's going to be you know, a high-end wide receiver two for the remaining of the season. Yeah. Nice to see Corey Davis on the list finally. And A.J. Brown also of the Titans was on there too. Uh, A.J. Brown, uh, I wouldn't get too excited about A.J. Brown. I mean, um, he only got he only got the three receptions, three targets, three receptions, and all that happened in the first half, and he did literally nothing after that. So don't. Uh, I know I dropped him in our league, but I, and of course he goes off. But I don't think he's. Uh, I don't think he's a, a real option. I think I think the guy to own is actually Corey Davis, really. But uh, AJ Brown, he's not wor- he's not bad to have on your on your roster. But he's a hard guy to start because of the. Um, you're talking boom bust here, and there's the consistency. Mm. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm even more extreme than you. If I have either of those guys, I'm trying to capitalize. On- I just don't think Mariota's can, um, and I I wouldn't be comfortable starting them. No. Okay. Uh, that's that's our look at uh, Sunday's top performers. Just to go through them uh, for for the top, Jameis Winston was the number one quarterback. Nick Chubb, number one running back. Chris Godwin, uh, obviously <laughs> on the coattails of Jameis Winston, was the number one wide receiver and uh, the number one tight end. Austin Hooper. Talk. Okay, panic button. It's panic button time. Um, scary times for me. I think it's uh, Odell Beckham. Uh, and I think this has got a lot to do with the, the fact that uh, Baker isn't playing very well at the moment. And so... Uh, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit concerned about it. if I'm, if I'm an Odell Beckham owner, I'm a bit concerned because, uh, here's, here's his fantasy points. He's got, he got 20 yards. He started it seven times, got two receptions for 20 yards, uh, against Baltimore. Against the Rams, he got 56 yards, nine targets, six. I mean, his last big game was against the Jets on, on Monday night. On a Monday night, he got 25 fantasy points. Got 161 yards there and a touchdown. But I don't know. That's not what really the kind of production you sort of expect. I don't expect two receptions from seven targets, Kev. Yeah. Um, well, as a Raven fan, I, I say that a lot of the game he was matched up on Marlon Humphrey, who people don't know yet. But Marlon Humphrey is the real deal. Um, and on the on the flip side of that. We absolutely cannot guard any kind of slot receipts, which explains why Jarvis Landry had, you know, 160 plus yards. So, um, 
that might be part of the explanation. If you can buy on Odell right now because of this, I absolutely I feel he'll have better going forward. The Ravens are just a, an interesting matchup for him. Um, I, I'm not willing to hit the panic button on Do- Odell yet, but I, he's not quite doing what you drafted. I think he was drafted as as probably the number five receiver, so he's not living quite up to that, but uh, I, I'm not panicking on him 100% yet. No, uh, not panicking on him completely, but I mean, if you're... But I think it should be toned down. But I have him on my panic button list because eh, he's not doing it. And uh, that's that's a little bit concerning because you want a little bit, just a little bit more production. But I think it's coming down to Baker. Baker Mayfield is putting up, uh, you know, Baker Mayfield. I have him. He's, he's, he's putting up, he's putting up, um, sort of like high, QB2 numbers. He's not QB1, if I may put it right now. Uh, he had three, 342 yards and a touchdown, but he's had five interceptions already this season. It's quite a lot for one quarter of the season already. Uh, pardon me, six interceptions. He's had six interceptions after four weeks. Uh, that's quite a lot, Kev. So. Yeah, Baker has not been playing, but I do. I believe the talent. What I don't believe is really Freddie Kitchens, but no. that's another story. Um, I think Baker will get better. Like I said, with the, the thing with that Chubb, I think that Browns often to get better one way or another, and uh, that bodes well for, for Beckham. Uh, who have you got as a who sort of got the panic button for you right now? Uh, yeah, so someone I've kind of got the panic button, DJ Moore. Um, it's just without Cam, there is just not. I mean, he's still a dynamic player, but he's just not getting the value of targets that we all thought he would um, since Cam. Uh, when Cam was playing the two games Cam played, he had 24 targets, uh, 16 catches. Since Cam's been gone, he's at seven targets, four catches. Yeah. Uh, one was a 52-yard touchdown, but, I mean, that was his only catch of the game. Last game, he had three catches, 44 yards. Uh, it just kind of seems like Kyle Allen is looking for him. Kyle Allen is looking for McCaffrey, of course, who had 10 catches. And then Curtis Samuel almost seems to be like his next go-to guy, so... I'm really worried about DJ Moore. I'm, I just don't think Kyle Allen is the kind of guy who can support um, a big play receiver consistently. He seems very content just to chuck it to Christian McCaffrey and get McCaffrey the ball in space, which I don't really blame him. Um, he's two and one, two and what, two and zero oh as a starter. So um, the, the the thing is, I'm I'm just super worried about DJ Moore. I'm I'm trying to sell him for anything I can. I think at this point because I don't know when Cam's coming back. Yeah, Curtis Samuel definitely looking better. 14 targets over the last two games, <clears throat> although. Uh, with Cam, he got 13 targets against Tampa Bay in his last game. Uh, in fact, he was the best uh, receiver uh, before Cam went out in week two in that uh, in his rather purple. He was actually the only uh, bright spot in that game against Tampa Bay. So, uh, yeah, DJ Moore, yeah, a bit, uh, bit of worrying times. Um, more worrying times for uh, a guy that you would kind of expect a lot more than what he, you're getting from him. And that's uh, Nuke. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, um, last three games, seven fantasy points, 10 fantasy points, six fantasy points. This is at PPR, 40, 67, and 41 yards, respectively, the past three weeks. Ah, uh, Kev, that's not getting it done. That's, that's, those aren't DeAndre Hopkins numbers that we're used to. Yeah, um, I wanted to include Deshaun Watson on my, you know, panic button type guys, but I figured you had uh, DeAndre Hopkins, so I'll just kind of talk about uh, Watson here. Sure. I think it's tied a little bit to Watson literally just getting killed on every single play. Against the Chargers, he had a fantastic game, 351 and three touchdowns, but um, the Chargers had Casey Hayward on DeAndre Hopkins, so he didn't do much. But these last, the two games that sandwiched it, 159 yards, uh, no touchdowns, 160 yards, no touchdowns. Um, it's, it's just disappointing. Um, and with that, you know, we always said that DeAndre Hopkins could do it with any quarterback, with any supporting cast. But um, the thing is that DeAndre Hopkins does have better support, a better supporting cast as far as pass catchers and playmakers. So they're not force feeding him the ball that like they need to, like they used to. And that's kind of killing his fantasy production. Obviously, I think he's going to bounce back. You can buy low on DeAndre Hopkins. I would, but um, yeah, I'm I'm right with you. I am a little bit worried about it. Yeah, it's Deshaun Watson is getting sacked an awful lot. Uh, I don't know what his total was, but I knew he came into the game against Carolina with 12 sacks already on the season. So yeah, so right, so he's uh, that's that's got a lot to do with it. It's it's not just the sacks. It's, you know, if there's getting a lot of sacks, you know, there's a lot of pressure up front. And when there's pressure up front, there's just no time for the, for the, uh, for Nuke to get his routes run and, uh, for, for, uh, Watson to find him if he's constantly watching his, uh, you know, to see if the left tackle is covering the, the, uh, defender. So it's, uh, yeah, it's really tough times. And frankly, um, you know, it's like Kitchens, Kev, I don't like Bill O'Brien. So 
as as a coach. I, I, I don't I really don't. Well, I think he's on the hot seat as well. Yeah, I mean he's got he's got DeAndre Hopkins throwing across the field on first and ten from like the thirteen yard line. It's insane. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah. That was, uh, yeah. So I guess, I don't know. They're trying anything they can. So yes, yeah, that's, that's not looking too, too good. Uh, who you got? Who you worried um, about? Someone who played tonight and I'm actually after seeing this final box score am even more firmly pressing the panic button. Uh, Juju Smith Schuster. Um, I just, I don't see the vision with Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph, if you go, I'll tweet it out. If you look at his passing chart, it's like, it's like Teddy Bridgewater's basically where everything is parallel to the line of scrimmage or like three to four yards downfield. Um, Jalen Sam, or not Jalen Samuels, James Conner led the team with 10 catches, uh, which just kind of tells you how much, how, how little, uh, he's willing to push the ball downfield. And that's really bad for Juvenile Schuster, um, who, you know, kind of relies on that big play potential. Uh, obviously that big play potential is there. He had a 76 yard touchdown last, but, you know, only seven targets and only caught three of them. And then this game, only three targets, uh, only four targets are caught three of them for 15 yards. So it, it's just not the same player. It's not the same offense. Um, no. And I, I don't, I don't see maybe and Rudolph changing his playing style and all of a sudden becomes some kind of gunslinger downfield. So that worries me even more than the De- uh, DeAndre Hopkins situation. Yeah, have we got a final for that game now, Kevin? Uh, 27-3. 27-3. Um, I don't know any totals. I wonder if I won. I probably did. If if Juju only got 15 yards in that game. Uh, I think you're good. Yeah, I think, uh, Don Ross did it just enough to get you there. Yeah, yeah, all right. Well, that's just typical of me in fantasy, always just uh, struggling for the finish line and goofing up on my ads and drops. And uh, it's just been a just been a terrible year for me. Of uh, I'm I'm really going all out on uh, on uh, sleepers and uh, and hit and hope type guys. You know, you got you know basically. Uh, oh, <laughs> you know, I hate to be in a position where I'm where I'm uh, almost like where I need injuries to benefit my team. That's that's not a good position to be in. It's kind of negative, and I hate being negative. But, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, anyways, uh, enough of DeAndre Hopkins and and, uh, and the game. So what have you got uh, for uh, your final panic button guy? Uh, I think I went through both of them. DJ Moore, do you just Oh, OG, oh, oh, I saw OJ Howard yeah. here. I can, I can come up with many, many other ones. OJ Howard, good God, he's Jameis. 760 yards over his last two, and OJ Howard has six catches for 70 yards. So yeah, he's supposed to be catching great. touchdowns for the kids. Getting for their for yeah. for toys for Christmas or school supplies or something. Yeah, that's not great. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, not great, not terrible, but also not great. No, um, but I but I had the panic button on Devonte Adams and uh, and he's come out flying and now I'm not worried about him anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean I'm not worried about Aaron Rodgers per se, but it's it, he's not looking. I, I treat I think with this this preseason you can almost treat these four first four games as kind of a warm up, but. I'm not really seeing like the explosive creative offense that I was promised with uh, Matt LaFleur coming in. So I am worried about Aaron. It looks like a lot of the same, you know, a lot of the same stuff he was doing under McCarthy. So that's what's a little disappointing. Uh, you know what? I actually, believe it or not, one surprising quarterback that isn't doing too bad for your fantasy players is um, Teddy Bridgewater. I mean, he's been finding Michael Thomas, nine targets, nine receptions, 95 yards. I mean, he didn't get a touchdown, but those are the numbers you expect from Michael Thomas. So, Teddy Bridgewater, uh, you you don't have, you're not starting him, but I mean, at least he's he's not hurting your uh, fantasy stars. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, Bridgewater is what he is. He's just not going to make mistakes, but he's also not going to push him down the field. Thomas is catching a bunch and getting just a bunch of yak. So, uh, he's making Bridgewater look a little bit better than he is, but so, I mean, that's what you're supposed to do as a big time receiver. So yeah, and the Saints are winning, and but that was a tough matchup against Dallas, and they, uh, and uh, so I gotta, I gotta give my hat off for he's not he's not putting up fantasy numbers in his own right, but he's not her, harming your fantasy stars either. Yeah. Maybe a that's little. exactly what we thought would happen to Teddy. We thought he'd just be passable. We thought, you know, we didn't have to worry too much about Michael Thomas as he was still going to get forced. It's everyone else in the offense. Yeah. But I was just trying to make the comparison to Mason Rudolph, who is, oh, yeah. uh, he is kind of harming your fantasy players a little bit. So we'll see how that uh, turns out. He's a work in progress. Okay, uh, moving on up. Uh, moving on up for me, of course, we talked about it. I'm going to... I'm going to give a miss on Austin Hooper. We've already discussed him. I'm going to move right on to Tyrell Williams, Kev. Uh, now, when everybody rushed to the waiver wire, and I should have too, I should have rushed out and got Tyrell Williams. I didn't believe in him. Um, 
but he scored four. He scored a touchdown in four straight games for the for the Raiders. I mean, okay, that you might not be able to keep that up, but he's still getting the targets. Uh, of the four games, three of the games he's gotten seven targets. Now he's not he's not the greatest pass catcher, but then again, um, I think I think there's a little bit of a targets doesn't really tell the whole story because Derek Carr, he, yeah, you you might be getting targeted by Derek Carr, but the ball isn't exactly uh, you know getting to you. So I think when it comes to when it comes to targets, it should be more like catch or drop. I don't know, but um, some of Derek Carr's passing leaves a lot to desire but Tyrell Williams he's a good he's a good flex starter for you on he's he's pretty consistent uh he's been getting uh, total fantasy points 20 13 10 and 11 I mean those are those are that's a guy you can start in the flex almost every week Kev yeah Tyrell is uh he's consistently their their number one look in the in the red zone uh Darren Waller's getting the majority of the targets from the 20s to the 20 uh from in between the 20s but Tyrell has scored a touchdown on so um, yeah, like you said, that's a guy who can probably feel pretty safe starting every week and, and uh, just roll with it. Yeah. So who you got? Who's moving on up for you? A uh, guy who's moving on up is Devontae Parker, actually. Yeah. Um, I get it. He sucks. There's actually like you can go find clips of him just dropping ball after ball. But um, the air yards are there. 800, uh, 487 air yards was fourth. And Rosen is willing to just take shots downfield. They're always playing from behind. So you know he's going to get a bunch of opportunities. And he's actually kind of capitalized on them. Um, obviously, he's not Alshon Jeffrey 2.0 or whatever everyone thought he was. But four catches for 70 yards, a touchdown against the Chargers last week. Three catches for 56 yards against the Cowboys. Um, I think Rosen is probably better for that offense than Fitzpatrick somehow. And uh, I don't know, just just bet on the area. All right, so uh, we'll get into uh, waiver pickups in a minute to close out the show, but uh, um, I think he's probably one that you think you might want to consider. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, why not? I mean, I, I hate really recommending Dolphins, but I actually think they've been looking better in the last two weeks. They played it pretty close, the Cowboys, in the first half last um, this week against the Chargers. I know it, it was 30-10, to 10, but I don't think it was that bad. Of a, um, so, yeah, I think uh, Parker Parker's startable, especially in these, in these weird... Uh, um, by week season, by week. Season. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about. Uh, well, I uh, I heard a little a little bit of hype about Albert Wilson. You know, I I just can't buy into the thought of him. Not in this offense. For one thing, it's the offense, and um, and then there's Devonte Parker. I mean, he's going to be there. Do you uh, do we still believe in Albert Wilson? I mean, he's, he hasn't played in three games. Is like right, like where. Wh- what what's the hype? I I don't get the hype is what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean Albert Wilson just if you look at it as just spectacular advanced numbers. Um, his uh, what is it? Oh, I I don't I don't know what it stands. What is it? R A C R. I always forget what it stands for. Uh, receiver air conversion ratio, which is like receiver receiving yards divided by air yards. Right. Um, over the last two years, consistently number one in the league. Um, last season before he got hurt, he was one of the better fantasy players who was making big plays left and right for the Dolphins. Uh, there was thoughts that Fitzpatrick targets slot receivers a ton and can be in the slot a ton. So, um, there was a lot of logic that went into it, but, uh, sometimes it doesn't really work out like that. Albert was, is kind of been, I mean, who knows? Maybe he can come back now that he's healthy and, and fall out, but yeah, he hasn't been a, a great pickup or anything like that. No, not, uh, not at all. I think, I think that, uh, I think everyone is, uh, <laughs> pretty quiet on him um i know that uh ran, it seemed like the girl fantasy uh pundits were were really on him they like him uh i know liz loza and Br- Br- brandon lee i think her name is and uh, they both they both like him but uh uh the guy we talked about last week um and uh he, he's he's the panic button everybody's dropping him now and he was once a favorite of yours kev i would like to hear your thoughts on kihuti now Oh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, we already talked about Hopkins' struggles. So naturally it trickles down to Will Fuller, Kenny Stills, Kiki Kuti. Kiki Kuti especially has it bad. Stills is coming and take, taking a large share of his snaps and targets. Um, yeah, Kuti is someone who I featured in my drop call and last week dropped. Even if Stills is coming back from that or Stills is going to be hurt. I think Kuti is pretty safely droppable. Okay, I just wanted to fill in because I already talked about uh, Austin Hooper. So who you got for your other moving on up? Uh, sure. So, um, Cortland Sutton, 
is a guy who quietly has been one of the better, better receivers in this league. I think Flacco is, he has a reputation, but he actually hasn't been too bad. This, um, and Sutton has been, you know, a pretty good receiver. He's had seven plus targets in each of his four games, had 62, uh, 62 yards and two touchdowns last game, 87 yards a game before, 40 in week two, and then 120 yards in week one. So I think he's usable. I do think there's a world in which the Broncos completely go in the tank and they trade Emmanuel Sanders, which would bump his value up even more. But even without that, I think uh, Sutton is a pretty usable wide receiver three. Um, and I, I don't think people really see that much value in the Denver passing attack. But I think him and Sanders can both be playable. How do you like him against the Chargers? Um, I will have to check. I'll have to check like pro football focuses like shadow matrix or is what they call it. If mm. Casey Hayward is on Cortland Sutton, then I'm off him completely. But if Casey Hayward is going to shadow Emmanuel Sanders all day, then yeah, I'll, I'll fire up Cortland Sutton. Oh, okay. So let's take a look at the waiver where uh, it's waiver day. We got to start uh, dumping players and picking players up. Um, uh, you mentioned these two panic buttons. Can we? Can Can I drop? I have OJ Howard. Can I drop him? Um, I don't think so. I think the tight end position is really, really bad. So if you're dropping in, someone's going to pick him up, and I think you're better off just trading if you want to do that. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I can't. I can't do it. Not with the Bucks offense turning it up a notch he might have a blow up game and he's gonna get yeah, those. Exactly. so it's, it's one of those things boy i've just been so itching i've been so wanting to get rid of him but no i yeah no because i own it's not just our league i own him in a fellow some other leagues too so and uh i can't get rid of him i mean i'm starting disley over him these days you know managed to get him starting a hooper i've got hooper in it. i actually drafted hooper as a, and uh, sure. i'm kind of happy about that because i was late drafting a, a a tight end so yeah, i'll take it i'll just stream the position now i gotta now i gotta set it and forget it guy um i think obviously guys you're going to be picking up this week is uh kev i think that jordan howard is for real i think you got to pick him up uh he's very ownable uh i think you spend well i don't know how I don't think you spend more than half your fab on him. Don't, don't, don't go, don't go, don't go crazy for him. But uh, Jordan Howard this week, I think it's probably he's probably he's my top waiver pickup that you got to grab this week. What do you think? Yeah, if he's available, if you do pick him up, um, I don't know about spending half. I, I'm not even sure I'd spend like thirty percent because I still do worry that he's a timeshare there. Um, but yeah. he did look good last night, or what was that Thursday night? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure how much I'm gonna spend on him. I think he's probably still pretty highly owned, but. Um, if he's available, yeah, go grab him. But I wouldn't burn anything too crazy. Off. No. Uh, who do you like? Who do you, who would you like to? Uh... Who are you grabbing this um, week? Obviously, Ronald Jones, if he's available, I'd rather have him. Jordan Howard, um, a guy people don't have him roster already, Golden Tate. He's going to be back from suspension next week, and I think Daniel Jones can actually make him somewhat useful. Uh, other than that, it's not that great of a week for waivers. I think um, some other suspension guys, Ben Watson, if you're really t- uh, desperate at tight end. Antonio Callaway could be interesting in deeper leagues. Chris Herndon is coming back two weeks from now. Uh, I think, yeah, two weeks from now because he's suspended four games. So, uh, and then, you know, you're looking at guys like Dante Pettis, Corey Davis, AJ Brown. Not sure if you want any of those guys, but hey, it could work out. It could work out. Uh, my, uh, a deep waiver guy. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a bad idea to own, uh, Hilleman, uh, the backup to, uh, Wayne Gallman. He got 10 carries, which is, uh, pretty half decent. He might be usable. Um, Naheem Hines, you might want to pick him up because Marlon Mack, we don't know, uh, his condition. I, the Colts are, you just, you, you don't get any good news from the Colts. Although Marlon Mack, I do believe he said that, uh, he was, uh, he said that he would have been okay to go back in if they, if they let him, but you just never know about these things. Um, there was one week he was seen carrying a, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, what do they call it? The leg brace thing. Walking so, boot. The walking boot. Yeah, that's it. And I, to me, Marlon Mack, Marlon Mack had a bad week too. So I think you might do well if you want to pick up Naheem Hines or uh, just on spec, you should pick up Naheem Hines or Jordan Wilkins just in case. Um, Jordan Wilkins isn't too bad of a running back. I mean, if Wayne Gallman can do it in, in New York, uh, Jordan Wilkins should be able to do it in, on the Colts. Any thoughts on that? On yeah, my ideas I there? I want to speculate. Marlon Mack is never a particularly durable player. So, um, yeah, if, if you want to speculate and just play that kind of backup carousel, then not a bad thing. Mm. Uh, you got anybody else? Anybody deep or... Uh... Um, based off the air yards, Preston Williams, same logic. Um, he's a guy. Uh, he's actually been pretty 
impressive. He's um, 15 catches on 30, 30 targets for 200 yards and a touchdown. Um, I really like him in, in like dynasty formats going forward. If Marquez Valdez scaling is unknown for some reason, definitely scoop him up. Anyone else who's deeper, uh, I don't know. It would be. Do we need to mention Jay Jaya is coming back? Maybe. Uh, he's still a free agent though, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think signed. They're saying he's held, so if he signs, I think he might be. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, I don't think the Giants would sign him, would they? I think they're okay with Gallman. They might sign him in a backup role or something like that. I can see it. Possibly, I guess. I mean, they uh, gave Hilleman his chance. Well, of course, Hilleman fumbled, didn't he? So he didn't really help his case there. Um, what about? Um, is it is it time to uh, is it time to start thinking about Kareem Hunt, Kev? No, I don't think so. I mean, he's still. What is he coming back? He's suspended eight games, right? So yeah. So back. we're halfway through now. Nah, I think you're still a couple. Of, I mean, if you if you have if you're four zero or or three zero or something like that, and you have the space, like yeah, I'd probably rather have it than I don't know some kind of some some backup that's not going to work out. But uh, I feel like people you know people probably still own him for some stupid reason. Okay, so uh, that's our waiver grabs. Uh, we we could we could go on forever, but we got to cut the short show short pretty quick here. So Kev, quickly, who are you dropping? Oh. Um, I don't know. I haven't really. I know I have the right to call him, but um, let's see. I mean, Kirk Cousins for sure. Get him out of here. Quarterbacks like like are just if you're not a week to week starter, you're so, so it's pretty you get on those. Um, running backs. Who else am I dropping? Uh, I think you'll be pretty safe dropping. Um, well. If you're still holding on to guys like Kalen Balaj and get him out of here, Idos is probably useless. Uh, a lot of those guys who, are, who we thought might distinguish themselves in a the backfield and definitely haven't, um, you can definitely get him out of here. Peyton Barber is a drop candidate based on Ronald Jones playing so well. Um, mm. Yeah, uh, it's it's not that uh, not that heavy a week for for the running backs. I mean, that's the thing when when not too many guys perform well. There's also it's like the bar is set much lower. You can't even drop these guys. Well, uh, that's our show for today. Uh, uh, everybody, I hope you have good luck in uh, week five. Thank you for joining us on the Fantasy Edge. Be sure to join uh, Joe Bond and AJ Applegarth with the uh, Fantasy Six Pack Hour, and that's released on Fridays, so you can have a bit of uh, the weekend preview. Thanks for joining us. For Kevin Wool, I'm Richard Seville. Uh, join us next time on the Fantasy Edge. Take care, everybody. <laughs>